Well, good afternoon, and in this recording, I want to talk about safety. I don't want to keep it. I want, I want to keep it short. I don't want to make it long. What I want to mention here is that safety. When people think of safety, they think of military safety. That means you're living in a country that's not under military attack of another country. Others think of safety that they live in a house that's well sealed. So that there's no, so that I mean, they want to live in a, they want to reside in a building that's well built, so that they they're not just walking somewhere and they slip through. Uh, you get what I'm saying? Okay, that's also physical safety, just like military safety. Okay, but for what you need to understand, safety isn't just physical. You can reside in a country. That there's no military conflict. You can reside in a country without civil war. And you can even reside in a country with less till no racism. You can even reside in a building that's well built. Yet still be unsafe. Why? Because safety isn't just physical. Safety begins on the inside. Just as healing and health begins on the inside. When you are not in agreement with Christ, you're not safe on the inside. Why? Because you're built to worship. You're built to cling on to the Most High. So when you are not in agreement with Christ, you are going to be supremely in agreement with something or someone else. And that something or someone else will be an idol unto you. And an idol will always be a snare onto you. And whenever there is an idol involved, there's always danger. Okay? Okay, so let's say you live in a country. Okay? No military conflict, no civil war, almost no racism, or so, uh, social tensions between, between ethnicities. Yet, you have this urge to have validation of others. Now, that's not safe. I'm just going to repeat it, that's not safe. Okay? Because that urge for validation, that, that it, 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 it's an addiction, it's a compulsion. So to live with this urge that you need validation from others, it's a curse. Even if you have a house that's beautifully decorated and you have a nice car outside, if on, on the inside you, you have this urge for validation from others, you're living under a curse and you're not safe because that urge will bring you in trouble and will even cause um, men, uh, cause phys physical disease, uh, diseases and physical sickness in your body because of the emotional weight of the pain when you don't get that validation. So you're not safe over there. Others may perceive you as safe. Your medical record of your body may claim that your body is healthy and maybe your body does not have any dysfunction yet but you're not safe true safety is when you are in agreement with what god says about you when you the continue in the word word when you develop when you grow in your consciousness of christ's righteousness when it becomes automatic automatic for you to agree and identify with the word and yes you do acknowledge the facts around you but you don't meditate on the facts you meditate on the promise when this happens that's when you are safe when you are in agreement with the will of God concerning you there are believers well, let me say they call themselves believers I'm not even sure if they are believers they go from church to church looking for some prophet or some anoint, uh, ordained minister to reveal their future unto them or to prophesy up, up upon them. And they're always looking for prayers from others. Now, there's nothing wrong with requesting a prayer from someone else. But if you are codependent upon the prayers of others, that's a disease. Straight up. And you're not safe then. Because you have an open door. For darkness to enter in and out. Some people claim, well, 
I'm only listening to Christian music. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Only Christian music. Well, many of the Christian songs that is singing in those churches, when you look at the lyrics and you analyze the lyrics with the words, they're an abomination. Why? Because if they're not grace-filled lyrics that are in agreement with the promises of Christ concerning you, then it's a, it's a spell that you're uh, chanting upon yourself when you're singing it. Yet you're thinking it's a Christian song, you're, you're worshiping God, you're glorifying God with your lips, but no, you're chanting a, 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 a spell on you because if you, because you're born again, you're on the new covenant, you're not on the law, you're on the grace. So you should never sing things as if God's people are called by his name, repent from the wicked ways, then I will heal their land. Oh, a minute. That was, that's a part of a scripture from the old covenant that applied to the, to the Israelites. The Israelites who were not e even seeking the Lord. Well, you are born again, filled with the Holy Spirit, so that scripture can never apply to you. But now you're chanting it upon yourself, agreeing with it. So, are you safe then? No. So when are you safe? Surely said when you're in agreement with Christ. When you, for example, there are people, they are seeking for some manual, whom to marry, whom to be friends with, whom, uh, how to eat. They want a whole mechanical manual handed over to them so that they can follow that manual and so that they will be trouble-free and pain-free. And they even go to churches seeking for such manual. Well, first of all, that's not biblical. That's not of God. That's putting your trust in some mechanical structure. It's idolatry. Christ never intended for us to have pain-free lives now. He intended for us to develop through suffering and to overcome by the word to be, called, to be more into his likeness. He does not ordain and send sickness to you, absolutely not. When he permits something to come to you, you ought to respond to it by stripes and meals. You ought to decree the word. And the word, his word that you decree, will overpower that sickness and the sickness will disappear. So anything the Lord permits is for your growth. So seeking for some manual, it's not biblical. It's not safe. It may feel safe, but it's not. Look, about physical safety, we know that you need to look twice, that you need to look before you cross the street. We know that if there's fire, or we stay away from it. Such physical safety is easy. People understand it. Yet, people don't realize that the physical circumstances are the outworking of what's going on in the spiritual. Okay, because human beings are spirit beings also. So, but when people are, when you have a group of people, when you have people that are meditating uh, on darkness, then dark circumstances are going to appear. It's something that happens in the spiritual and manifests in the natural. So, your way of thinking is very important. And here's another thing. It's true that you need to be wise who you hang around with, absolutely. But don't go out there seeking for beneficial people. Why? Because again, you're putting your trust in men, not in God. And when you put your trust in men, you're basically agreeing with a curse. Because now we become codependent on men. No. Agree with his promise. So whenever you hear someone say to you, the Lord does not always heal, hey, that's a spell. Don't agree with it. Because the scripture makes clear, by stripes you're healed. And in, in, even the book of Exodus is written over and over again that, that the Lord is your healer, that the Lord will remove all sickness from you. Psalms 103, verse 3, the Lord will heal all your sickness, sicknesses. So, when someone claims to you the Lord does not always heal, they're not in agreement with the Holy Spirit. And if they claim to be a believer, they come in the name of Christ and they, and they utter such a nonsense to you over and over again, I'm not even sure if they are saved. And probably they're even demon-possessed. 
okay well that's what i want to say for you now agree with the word agree with his promises that's the only objective enduring safety there is that being said to all be safe be at peace